Welcome to Too Many Handhelds. Uh, today I'm doing another kind of mini podcast. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different than normal. Uh, it is gaming related and there's a gaming element of it, but most of it is just a personal story that I want to tell you. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. It's, it's very personal. So today, the day I'm recording this is March 7th. And a long time ago, now dating myself, seeing how old I am, in uh, March 7th, 1997, uh, unfortunately, I lost my father in a very sudden accident. Um, there was no warning. Uh, I saw him the night before, and then very early in the morning, that was it. He was gone. And it affected me a lot. I mean, it's, it's the kind of thing. Something like that will shake you to your core. Um, at the time, I was 14. It was a couple weeks before my 15th birthday. And uh, it's... It's a really hard thing to describe because something like that changes your life in a number of ways. And the day that happened, there was so much going through my head. Um, if you think about maybe even the beginning of the pandemic, that might be a good comparison. <laughs> it's on a smaller scale, but just how, you know, there was a point in time where after that, nothing is the same. That was kind of what it was like, but it's sort of like this person that was really close to me that was in my life uh, up until that point that I assumed would be in my life for much, 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 much longer was suddenly gone. And this is someone who I expected to be there for milestones in my life. Um, you know, even in a practical sense from like financial standpoint, he was the breadwinner of the family. Like my mom wasn't working at the time. It was just him bringing home the bacon and he was gone. So it's like, wow, you know, are we going to pay our mortgage? Are we going to be homeless? What's going to happen? You know? Um, and just missing this person intensely, you know, and just, there's a lot of stuff going through your head after an event like that. And there's just all this grief and fear and confusion and even anger at like the unfairness of it where, you know, it's, it's just something you don't expect to happen that you know, no one did anything to deserve, but now it's like this horrible thing that you have to deal with every day. So why am I telling you this? Um, one, it's the day and also just... Um, like I finished watching WandaVision and it was really good, but just seeing a show like that that confronted grief the way I did was really good and kind of cathartic for me at this point in time, uh, you know, just in my year, because every once in a while, not every year, but mo many years, uh, at this point in the year, I tend to get a little depressed. And I didn't this year, thankfully. Um, maybe it'll come late, who knows. <laughs> but um, it's the kind of thing where it's like having a scar, where you get over it, but it's it's never fully you know healed the way it would be. And it just sort of becomes something that you overcome and move on with your life. But on that day, on the day that happened, um, it just broke me. And it was just the kind of thing where just trying to process what my new reality was was really difficult because I couldn't accept it. Like, it's the kind of thing where... Seeing a magic trick is probably a good comparison where like in your your heart you know something and in your head you know something. So like, you know, you see the magician saw somebody in half and you know your eyes saw that that happened, your brain saw that that happened, but in your heart you know that's not right. That's not really what happened. You know, you know that it's got to be something else. It's got to be, you know, she's fine, it's some kind of illusion, you know, everything's good. And even that day, even knowing what happened, like there's still this sort of like weird irrational part of my my heart I guess that just wanted it to not be true and it's hard to accept something like that even though you know I literally lived it so <laughs> to get to the video game aspect of this um, that night I just didn't know what to do with myself like I literally was like like the entire day I did not go 30 seconds without like panicking about something or being angry about something or scared or worried or whatever I was just this ball of emotion trying to process this thing that had happened. And I literally didn't know what to do with myself. So I asked my mom, you know, what do I do? <laughs> like, she's going to know. She has any answers. And that's actually kind of the look she gave me. It was just like, I don't know. And she's just very kind of dismissive. She was like, just, I don't know, go play a video game or something. Because I, I do like video games a lot, you know, and even back then I did. I was like, all right, you know, I, I don't know. But it, I'm like, I'll just, it, it's something, you know? So, <laughs> you know how you have that one game, the new game, the game that you just got, um, either it's a new thing that just came out or it's the newest one you bought or it's whatever your, your quote unquote main game would be. Uh, at the time, mine was Dragon's Lair for Sega CD because there was a, someone at school that was a friend that sold me his copy for like, I don't know, $8 or so. Not much. Just, it was like, I, I think he just like wanted some money and didn't play it anymore. Didn't really care. So yeah, he sold me uh, Dragon's Lair, and I think I also bought Rebel Assault from him too. But anyway, I sat down to play it, and 
the thing about Dragon Slayer is that it is a cartoon drawn by Don Bluth, um, who's done lots of Disney animation. And the way it works is you kind of watch this cartoon, and at specific points in time, you push a button to react to what's going on within the cartoon. So that's what I did. Um, I was sitting there, and it takes just a little bit of focus. And my friend, when he gave me this, uh, he was kind enough to include... It's like a folded up piece of a uh, magazine that had all the little button presses that you need to do on each scene. And it, in one way, it helps with the game a lot because you know what buttons to push, but you still don't know the timing of it, and Sega CD doesn't really show you the way the modern ones do. So it's the kind of thing where you really have to focus and time your button presses perfectly. And if you do that right, you'll get through each scene okay. So I sat down, I played my Dragon's Lair for like 45 minutes, and when I was done, yeah, I looked up and I had kind of like a revelation. I was like, oh my god. You know, for the first time in that entire day, I wasn't dwelling on the horrible thing that had happened, that I was like totally like messed up about. And it didn't help much. <laughs> I mean, it's still like, you know, a huge piece of me that I was trying to struggle with. But like, on some tiny little thing, it was kind of good just to have a little break from worrying about all that stuff. And I realized like how therapeutic games could be and how just having like a little kind of like time out from my mind worrying about all these things was really great and it helped so much. So I started kind of using games in that way where they're more therapeutic, but at the same time, I, I wanted to make sure it was like a, a momentary thing and not like an escapist thing. Because <sighs> around that same time, um, there were some people I knew that became very self-destructive and I very, very, very easily could have gone down that route, but because I saw that, I kind of made my own personal decision to not become that as much as possible. So it was the kind of thing where, you know, if I was playing for too long, I would, like, stop myself because I just wanted to make sure that even though I knew I was in control of myself, I wanted to stay in control of myself. Because what can happen is if you lean on something like that too hard, um, it becomes something that's almost like a dependency where you can't get by without it. And that doesn't just go for games, that goes for, like, drugs and other stuff, of course, obviously. But, you know, I think escapism in games is probably a lot healthier than, you know, an addiction. But it is still a form of addiction. It can be a form of addiction. Um, there was someone in college I knew who... I viewed him almost like a rival in classes, because we had a lot of classes together and we did do projects. And he always made similar projects, and they were always a little better than mine. But then, um, he just kind of got addicted to an online game and just stopped coming to school, and it was like that cliche story you hear of just that person whose life kind of fell apart because something kind of took over it. So, you know, that was another factor in that kind of trying to make sure that I, I still like was in control of my own life and didn't let something like that do it. But I still, to this day, use games like that to kind of just shut my brain off and kind of like clear anything out of it and stop worrying about things for a little bit. And then, you know, enjoy them, but, you know, then come back and deal with them a little bit later, because I think that's kind of a healthy approach to it. I could be wrong. I'm not a therapist. I don't know, but um, that's been my approach, and that's also why I can't play games for too long. Like, that's why it takes me forever to beat an RPG, because I can't just sit down and play it for like eight hours. Like, I need to take breaks, otherwise I just don't feel right about it. It's kind of a hard thing to describe, but um, I think all these events kind of molded me into this this type of person but um i'm grateful very much so because you know at that point in time my life could have gone in a lot of different ways but just that one little recommendation of like i don't know go play a game like kind of set me on the path i needed to be on and it was just a really simple little thing like my mom didn't know what to do any more than i did of course but it was helpful and it was very good and uh i am having an okay life so I didn't do anything crazy and self-destruct. I didn't get addicted to anything, thank God. And uh, I'm okay. And it's the kind of thing where, again, every year around this time, I'm still affected by it, and it still kind of bothers me. And it's the kind of thing where, you know, I'll, I'll never get to talk to him again, and that's kind of upsetting. Um, there are a lot of people that say, you know, oh, in the afterlife, maybe, you know, that's fine, but I'm, I'm talking about this life right now. And there's always, it feels like a very, like... Like some like a TV show with a very like big cliffhanger and then it gets canceled, you know, or not even like you're just in the middle of mid season it's just gone, and there's a lot of untied uh, loose ends and things that you wanted to say and do and stuff like that, 
And having that birthday immediately after was even worse because he got me gifts that he was never able to give me. So like, one of the gifts that I have that I still have to this day and I treasure is that uh, when I was a kid, my mom sold Tupperware. And so when we went fishing, I had a little Tupperware like tackle box, which as a kid is fine. But once I got to be like 14, it looked kind of goofy to have that. And I felt kind of goofy carrying it, but that was the tackle box I had. So he got me like a really nice adult big boy tackle box, but then was never able to take me fishing with it. So things like that were just like these bittersweet moments that happen that it's just like, ah, oh, and it just crushes my soul, you know, but you know, that's, that's how things are. So that is why in a very long witted story, um, I love Dragon's Lair. It's like one of my favorite games, even though it's not even a great game. Like I'll admit, like it's, it's one of those FFB games that if I didn't have that magazine clip out, I wouldn't have been able to do it. And, um, I actually laminated that magazine clip out just because it, helped me in that moment and it's one of those things where it's just a little piece of paper but it meant so much to me just to kind of like help me through that and kind of again take away my worry for just that little point in time I really needed it that like that's another thing that I treasure and will forever treasure just because it means a lot you know so uh that is my long story uh if you're still listening thank you uh, I just wanted to get that up and let you know <laughs> this is uh I don't know. It's, it's a weird day. I don't know how to wrap this up, to be honest. I really don't know how to wrap up any of my videos, to be honest. Um, I should probably come up with uh, some kind of sign-off, but thank you for listening. I appreciate it very much, and uh, have a great day. And, you know, love your family. Like, you don't know how much time you have left. You never do. You live every day like it's your last. Thank you for listening.